people. I'm loving the show uh, so far. Um, I'm going to begin by asking you both if you watch the original series, because obviously I'm British. So I, when I was growing up, I remember I was, I'm the sort of perfect age for when, well, I say perfect age. Uh, I, was, I was slightly too young, but I sort of caught up with it eventually. So yeah. Chris Smoke is a huge part of our kind of pop culture here in the UK. Uh, did you guys go back and watch the original uh, Russell T Davies series for inspiration for this show? Um, so I was definitely, I was first introduced to the American version in college. And then I went back and did a deep dive on both versions, but really like binged the the British version uh, right around the time of, of booking this. And I'm definitely a fan. Yeah. I didn't know much about it prior to receiving the audition either, but also the Queers Folk franchise, the name, the energy that it brings when it's seen on a page, I was mostly aware of, but after receiving the audition and all, I did I did my research. I did my time. <laughs> because if you I've just just recently, I mean you've had sort of Heartstopper on Netflix and Fire Island is released this week on Disney Plus. And obviously now we've got Queer as Folk coming out on Peacock. I mean, these are some incredible sort of stories. I mean, how important is it for for young gay people out there to see themselves reflected back to them on screen and in, in shows such as this? Mm. I mean, it's it's like a little bit of a queer renaissance right now, is what it feels like. Um, it's beautiful. I mean, look at, you can look at projects like Heartstopper. You can look at projects like Queer Folk, and there are stories being represented that we may not have seen on television ever before. It's told in ways that people can relate to, whether they are part of the LGBT community or not. And um, it feels so major to, to be part of it and, and to have a small hand in, in telling those stories. Yeah, and the range of life experience of these characters, I feel like for kids specifically, not only to see themselves, but to see a self that they like could be when they are in their 20s and 30s and 40s and such is very, uh, you know, important because I don't think that there's a lot of, there's not a lot of, like, well, I'll speak personally, I don't know a lot of older queer people that are older than me. And to see how some of them are established and, you know, not established, whichever, I think is uh, is really important for those kids' eyes to know that there are people living like them. And you're getting the chance to see queer people fail yes. and see, see, our, see queer people thrive. You know, mm-hmm. um, there have been so many iconic straight cis characters that have been given the opportunity to mess up. Mm-hmm. And queer characters seldom get the opportunity to be flawed and be adult and be human. And I think that's the best part about Queer as Folk is we really do get to see all of these people with very different lived experiences who um, their queerness doesn't uh, hold them back from messing up here and there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it it felt like a real celebration of the community without feeling like sycophantic. It felt authentic, which was such an important It didn't feel like a Target Pride ad. (laughs) Um, But I mean, Stephen said that Queer as Folk, the British one, was was his awakening in his youth. I wonder what was your guys' uh, equivalent? What was your Queer as Folk? That's a great question. Um, I don't know if I had a, a queerest folk that was like my queer awakening on TV. I think, you know, being just like a queer kid who lived close to New York City, um, you know, I, I definitely always aspired to, to find a, a community of people who I could relate to. And, you know, I think in my adult life, uh, I worked in nightlife in New York doing drag and stuff. And I think, I think um, part of my queer awakening was... Uh, letting loose and doing drag. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I, my queer awakening, I feel like just the same as Jesse, there are little, there are people in my life when I was younger who are still in my life as far as like family, like blood family goes. So I feel like we all had a kind of awakening together that's also still happening so closely. So like that with the addition of, you know, Queen Latifah, even though she was very not, uh, she did not share herself until like recently, seeing her in shows like Living Single and movies like Set It Off, where she was engaged in that, you know, gay part of her was, I mean, it was pretty hot. And so (laughs) I just... I just I just always love to see her carry herself on screen because she exudes so much more than I than I think is picked up on. Uh, And then also this Queer as Folk is definitely a part of my awakening, like the, you know, phase four of awakening. So that was sweet. 
And how is it working in, in New Orleans? I mean, I was lucky enough to go there a couple of years ago and it's such a fantastically vibrant sort of city and place to be. It must have been a great place to, to shoot some of this. It really was. I'm, I'm from New Orleans, so to be shooting on these different kinds of locations, like on Frenchman Street and in Algiers, where, you know, <laughs> people are not allowed to go <laughs> in New Orleans, uh, inside joke. But it was very, it was, it was just, it was a new layer of, of life to be able to work in a place that's home in this way, in such a full way, with all of these fuller characters and people. And, and I'm not from New Orleans, but, um, you know, I left, I left after filming feeling like New Orleans was home. You know, I definitely really, really came to, to love myself in that city and to just love the city itself and the, the local friends I made and the, the memories we had there. It is such a uniquely special and spooky mm-hmm. and uh, vibrant truly is, mm-hmm. is the word for New Orleans. It's just so much better you say New Orleans. We say New Orleans. We're so bad at that. We've got to start know, saying how do you No say one it? knows how to say New Orleans and it's so chill. I just, you know, let it roll off the mouth tongue of New Orleans with people like to say New Orleans and <laughs> put emphasis on. It's funny. Say it how you say it, man. <laughs> I mean, I was wondering too, I mean, obviously, you know, there is, there is some really funny and really kind of charming moments to this, but it is obviously set in the aftermath of a kind of, of, of a tragic sort of incident. I was wondering, I was reading that there were real life survivors from the Orlando shooting at working as consultants on, on this show. Did you guys get the chance to, to meet any of them? I didn't. No, I, not that, not that I know of, um, but I know they worked closely in the writing and, and whatnot with Steven and, and the mm-hmm. writers room throughout the whole season. Yeah. But I mean, it does seem like, I mean, the whole crew and the whole cast seems so brilliant. It just seems like one of those sort of sets where you can just tell from watching it, everyone just got on and had like a good time making it. it I was wondering, it's so special. <laughs> but was there anyone who caused the most cuts due to being maybe so, too funny? <laughs> no, too funny? Yeah. I didn't get to work with her, but, um, oh my God, what is her name? Um, Julie? Oh, uh, yeah. no. Um, um, hi, Gay. Uh, her name is Meg, Meg Stalter. Oh. Oh. Um, I did not get to work with her, um, but apparently she was such a riot <laughs> in in uh, the episode she appears in. And how was it? Did you guys get to get the chance to spend much time with Kim and Juliet at all? I mean, they're sort of such icons of, of screen. It must have been great to sort of be able to share the screen with them in some scenes. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, yeah, CG definitely worked with, with Kim the most. Yes. I mean, to be able to separate... Kim Cattrall from like the person of who Kim is was very important in order to work with her in order to see her as a person and not just you know a name so it was uh it was a very new experience that I'm glad I got to be a part of and work with her in that way and really you know get to see eye to eye as both workers and as the characters in the show because they're very close or become very close and they're both so wise and have blended a really um a completely different energy to yeah. to the scenes they were in compared to the rest of the cast who are just utter balls of chaos. <laughs> I was reading that the, the, it was a sort of all queer writing room, but I was wondering about how you, important you think it is on shows like this to have LGBTQ actors play the roles as well. I mean, it it shows in the final product. You know, we we are people who our lived experience can relate to the stories being told. And I think it shows in the performances and, you know, and in even going back to, you know, the writer's room being entirely queer. Um, a lot of the people on the production were queer. A lot of our department heads were queer. Mm-hmm. Really queerness and the diversity of the LGBTQ plus community um, is imbued in the fabric of the show. And, um, you know, I, I think there's a reason why the words authentic, authentic storytelling and, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera, are keep coming up because, it shows. Yeah. I mean, of course, you know, trans visibility is so important as, as well. And, it's, and and very much a focal point of the movement at the moment is to ensure equality for the trans community and to combat any prejudice. I mean, how are you noticing changes within the entertainment industry, within TV and within film? Do you think that enough is currently being done? Um, whether whether there's enough or not, uh, I, I can't really answer to. But um, I like that there's people like Jacqueline Moore, who is a, a trans woman and a showrunner. Um, more trans people need to be given opportunities behind the camera to develop their to develop their own shows, to be hired on other productions, to be in movies and, and stuff. 
it's easy to throw a couple trans actors on screen and pat yourselves on the back. Mm. But if the storytelling you're doing isn't uh, reflective of the lived experience of trans people and what we face in real life and everyday situations, or if it doesn't make us normal humans, just like everyone else, then, um, you know, I raise an eyebrow at, at, at that storytelling. And the fact that on this show, on Queer as Folk, we get to tell these beautifully authentic stories. Um, I really hope it resonates with audiences. And I, I think they'll see something that they may not have gotten the chance to see on TV before. Yeah, we just need, need another series now. <laughs> but thank you so much uh, for your time today. And thank you. And best of luck with the release of the show. Cheers. Thank Thanks. you. Cheers. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey you